The winds just picked up about uh, 25 minutes ago. Seems to always happen when there's a 17 coming in. Oh yeah, the winds pick up like yeah. that. So you ready to? I'm ready. Okay. So uh, can you right, state so your name? Have you and safe to first, yeah, okay. <laughs> state your name and your position. Oops, well, it's the top. Yeah. Uh, understand it is now. Right. Thank you. Station one, tower. Sorry. And we'll, we're flexible to like move around and stuff if you want to like, you know, get up and show us anything. Okay. Hi, Jim. If you pass on to Pegasus Control, the aircraft commander advises safe to approach the aircraft. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Pegasus Control, that's Good. <laughs> so, what's your name? Uh, my name is Kevin Zool. And what are you doing here in Antarctica? I'm a weather observer. Um, we do uh, observing uh, hourly observations uh, out of the uh, airports, the runways, and we do uh, climate data and uh, gathering information, disseminating out in town for the outlying camps. Oh, how'd you get into doing that? Um, I was. Uh, I'm originally from Bermuda. Oh. And um, I was working at the weather service in Bermuda, and there's a gentleman who had come down, uh, who had been down here for a few years, who ended up getting the job up there, told me about the job five years ago, gave me an email address, sent me the uh, information, and next thing you know, I'm coming down here in 2002. Wow, that's quite a difference yeah. for Bermuda. <laughs> yeah. And how did you get into doing weather stuff in Bermuda? Um, word of mouth, the job opened up, mm. and uh, put my application in, and rest is history, yes. So what does it take to be a weather observer? Um, I don't know how to answer that question. It, mm -hmm. It's, I mean, you have to have uh, a basic knowledge of weather to begin with. Um, you have to be able to organize yourself, uh, be able to hit timelines, uh, be able to work well by yourself with uh, little management. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just evolve throughout the job. What do you, what would what do you call a basic knowledge of weather? What does that mean? Uh, I mean, you have to know uh, you have to know uh, you have to be able to, to decide, uh, make quick decisions through uh, the different very uh, the different types of clouds that are out there. Yeah. Um, you have to be able. You have to be very wary of, of, of frequent weather changes. Uh, like today, we just had the uh, increased winds. Uh, with the flight landing and mm. you know you have to be spot on letting the aircraft know that what's happening on the ground which is the, the sole reason why we're here out in the towers right. is for uh, our eyes on ground for the aircraft that are flying in and around the continent mm -hmm. so i mean it's if you don't have knowledge of what's going on outside you can't do your job right 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 well um you've got obviously a lot of instrumentation and stuff like that what kind of instruments do you use to find out what's happening outside? The, the uh, the number one instrument is uh, your eyes. Oh, it, um, that's your you're always out looking, always looking for changes in the weather. Uh, where we get our uh, data from is off of a program called TT Wind, uh, and that's a pay saw that's sitting on top of the air traffic control tower right here. Um, from that, we get our um, temperatures, our dew points, the altimeter, the station pressures, um, our winds, uh, and that's the that's the basic. Uh, weather observation that we're going to be sending out and then after that it all comes down to eyeballs with the type of clouds that you see in the sky uh, if there are any uh, anomal uh, anomaly clouds uh, like over on top of Erebus right there we have uh, ultracumulus and lenticulars mm -hmm. and that normally happens in mountainous regions and pilots want to know that because that tends to have uh, turbulence uh, hanging around those clouds mm. and so do you think that um It'll ever be a case where there doesn't need to be somebody, you know, there doesn't have to be eyes on the ground or? Sure. Uh, oh, yeah? Eventually, eventually, yeah, but uh, this day and age, technology is not far advanced mm -hmm. uh, uh, to be able to do our job here. I mean, they have it right now, and it's, it's being 
somewhat tested with the automated weather sites. There's about uh, 14 or 15 of them around the ice shop right now. Yeah. And uh, every year somebody's got to go out and, and, and uh, fix them and, mm -hmm. and uh, bring them back up to uh, uh, specs. Mm -hmm. um, but the, unless you have uh, a webcam that's reliable, 100% reliable, uh, yeah. You're not going to be able to tell the different types of clouds. You can tell the heights of the clouds. Um, sometimes accurately, sometimes not accurately. Uh -huh. um, that's with kind of a, a laser. And that's a straight up laser. That's that's mm -hmm. going to tell you the height of the cloud straight above you. Yeah. Not what else is going on around here. So there's weather that's rolling in, coming down from uh, Herbie Alley. Mm. This this instrumentation is not going to be able to tell you that until that weather gets here. Mm -hmm. And what forecasters are looking for are what's coming, not what's here now. What do you find, um, have you ever been in a situation where the instrumentation is telling you one thing and your eyes are telling you something totally Sure, it happens, happens quite a lot. Oh, yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the gauges that we have on here is a vis sensor. And uh, what happens with the vis sensor sometimes is uh, it'll get covered with snow. And once it gets covered with snow, it's going to read a zero. Zero. Right, yeah. when chances are uh, the outside visibility is not zero. Mm -hmm. It may be down quite a lot, but it's not going to be zero. And Scare 5 1, right? The center maintain 1 1000 and report the field in sight and 30 damage. Scare 5 1, Roger. The center maintain 1 1000, report the field in sight and 30 DME for further descent. So what's special about weather here in Antarctica? Uh, kind of experienced a little bit of it today. Mm -hmm. uh, you go, you, you put your eyes down for two or three minutes, not looking outside, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden the wind picks up by 15 knots. And, mm -hmm. and uh, on, a, on a different day, if we had a little bit of light snow or, or, um, or even uh, just uh, other snow, other blowing snow coming across earlier in the days, mm -hmm. that difference could increase or decrease the visibility within you know, two or three minutes. Mm. And is that's different than uh, any other place that you more any other place that I've observed? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, working in Bermuda, it's uh, it's relatively Miles. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and you have to watch out for his rain showers. Right. And so, um, what's important about working down here? Is Skier five one uh, current winds three five zero at two three. I said, um, <laughs> Skier 5 1, Roger. Uh, set yourself up for a left downwind skiway 3 3 to center maintain 6,000 and report the field in sight. You guys need to have a sense of really far away weather, too, because these planes are coming in. Right. Uh, Gear 5 you 1, Roger, ahead, clear digital approach, yeah. skiway 3 3, and uh, report turning a left base. Yeah, talk, talking about the topo topography around here, I mean, you have uh, uh, White Island and Black Island are within uh, 20 miles of the base, but out towards the society, you're looking at uh, 60 miles away, but it looks a lot closer yeah. because it's such the, the flat plane. And yeah. Do you think, um, so yeah, I was, gonna, I was asking, what do you think there's something important about? Um, Working down here in Antarctica, and, and kind of especially involved as far as having the job down here. Well, especially involved with like weather and climate. Is sure, I mean this for for somebody like me who's uh, who who came from a tropical oh, yeah. climate background. This is mm -hmm. like I'm the first first Bermudian to work down here. Oh, you know, I mean <laughs> that's number one special to me. Number two is this is a this is a place where only a handful of people are allowed to come in their lifetimes. Yeah. So. To feel a part of that, it makes that much better. Skier 5 4 1 3 6 0 at 2 3. I think I'm going to maybe shoot a little bit around. Okay. Out, out the windows and stuff. But you can go ahead and shoot stills if you want. Okay. Good. Well, is, what have I missed? Have I missed something important that you'd like to say about um, your work?